Right. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Um, this morning, we wanted to talk about the newly released waivers released on 831. Uh, my name is Bobby Beach. I'm a school nutrition specialist. So as you all aware, on 831, there were eight nationwide waivers released by USDA, all of which were extensions meaning that these waivers have already been released in March and April, and all of them are valid until December 31st, 2020. And what this means for you all is you now have more options for your meal service programs. So you can operate under the National School Lunch and School Breakfast Program as you typically do. You can operate the Seamless Summer Option or the Summer Food Service Program. And all of these programs are available um, regardless of your education type. So whether you're 100% distance learners, if you have all your students in person, or you're operating a hybrid learning model. So I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of each program to help you decide what would best fit for your SFA. Under the National School Lunch and School Breakfast Program, um, some pros, there's no additional application to participate. You'd be operating under the same regulation requirements. Um, you would not have to change your meal service models if the summer food service and seamless summer waivers do end on December 31st, 2020. And there'd be no additional administrative review um, besides the one that you already receive under your National School Lunch and School Breakfast programs. Some cons, um, you must continue to collect applications and count your meals served by eligibility type. This means collecting money for any paid students and you can only serve your enrolled students. Under the Seamless Summer Option Program, some pros are that all meals that you serve can be served and claimed as free. All children 18 and under can participate. There would be no additional administrative review. And you'd be operating under the same regulations under the National School Lunch Program because it is considered an extension of NSLP. And all your school, school sites are eligible to participate. And some cons for the Seamless Summer Program, there would be an additional form to submit in order to participate. And this would take one to two days for us to approve, depending on the time that you submitted it. And again, these waivers are only in effect until December 31st, 2020. So if these waivers are not extended, you'd be asked to transition back to the National School Lunch Program starting January 1st. Under the Summer Food Service Program, again, all children 18 and under can participate. All meals are served and claimed at that free rate. You would not have to collect any free, free and reduced lunch applications. There are higher reimbursement rates under the soup, um, summer food service program. And there's additional flexibilities in the meal pattern. Some cons for the summer food service program. It is an extensive application for a new sponsor. It can take up to a week for approval time. Um, and any free meal service under the Summer Food Service Program cannot start until your application is approved. There are different regulations um, under the Summer Food Service Program that you would have to familiarize yourself with. And you would be receiving a separate administrative review this year if you are a new sponsor. And again, um, any seamless summer or summer food service program option is only currently available until December 31st of this year. So some next steps for you all, you want to consult with your team and decide what is the best meal service option for your SFA. If you're um, continuing your national school lunch and school breakfast program, you're done. Your application is approved, you can go with your normal meal service um, meal service types in this COVID world. The seamless summer option, you would have to fill out an opt-in form, which would be sending out um, right after this meeting. 
And under the su Summer Food Service Program, you'd contact Lindsay Talbot to start your application process. We do recommend if you are a new um, summer food service program, we recommend the seamless summer option just for a trans, um, an easier transition from NSLP to SSO. But again, this is 100% your decision and it was whatever um, whatever is going to fit best for your SFA. So I want to talk about types of seamless summer operations. So when you fill out this form, you're going to be asked a few questions. Um, one is which if your school sites will be operating as closed enrolled or open. Closed enrolled sites are only allowed to serve the enrolled students. And for open sites, you can serve anyone 18 years old, 18 years old and under. And to ensure program integrity, open sites should not be in close proximity to another. So to limit that double dipping of families or students to receive multiple meals under the open site. And as a best practice, we recommend that you establish these open sites in areas of high need. So you'll look at those schools that have a 50% free and reduced lunch rate or above. And some seamless summer requirements. Again, this is an extension of the National School Lunch Program. So all the same regulations apply. For the meal pattern, you'd be operating the National School Lunch and School Breakfast Program um, meal pattern. Um, SSO does allow flexibility. If you're doing an open site, you can serve under one age grade group and offer versus serve is not required. And if you've already submitted your opt in form for the national school lunch fall waivers, any meal pattern um, requirements that you asked to be waived and were approved are still in effect under seamless summer. There's only two types of meals that can be claimed under the seamless summer option. So either a breakfast or a lunch or a lunch and a snack. You don't have to offer two types of meals. This is just the maximum you can um, claim under seamless summer. There's a self monitoring requirement similar to your on site reviews that are required under your national school lunch program. And you would complete this once a year during your seamless summer option meal service and we will be sending out a template for that. And advertisement, you must make a reasonable effort to advertise the availability of free meals and the site locations. Um, you advertise any open site as the community can, anyone in under 18 can participate at that open site. I wanted to talk a little bit about seamless summer claiming. You would continue to claim these meals in CNP under your National School Lunch Program application. And again, all meals are served and claimed at that free rate. So for the total number of meals served each month starting in September, you would claim them under the free rate for lunch and breakfast. And for your breakfast meals, you will claim them under the rate the site was approved for in your 2021 application meaning if those sites were approved for either regular or severe need breakfast, you would continue claiming those breakfast meals at the free rate under the regular or severe need, depending on um, how that site was approved for. So for eligible children, um, when you're entering your eligible children in your monthly claims, for any closed enroll sites, you're going to enter the total number of children enrolled. Because you're serving everyone at that free rate, all the students at that school site are considered enrolled. And that's the number you would be entering in the free category under eligible children. For your open sites, it's a little different because you're serving the community. You don't have data on the number of children eligible. Um, so in order to be able to submit your claim, you're going to enter the total number of children that you serve on your highest participation day. And this would be a representative of the number of eligible children you serve during that month. And this, and we recommend this because CMP um, has a system in place that it would reject any claim in which the total number of meals claimed under each program exceeds the total eligible children multiplied by the number of serving days. 
want to talk about a few um, popular questions and answers that we can address before we open the floor up. Um, what is the approval time for your seamless summer option waivers? In most cases, waivers can be approved between one and two business days. When can your SSO service start? Your seamless summer meal service can start immediately upon approval. Can SSO waivers submitted be backdated to include meals already served under the National School Lunch and School Breakfast Program? This is a yes and no question. Waivers can be approved retroactively for meals served starting September 1st, 2020. Any meal served prior to this date must be claimed under the National School Lunch Program under eligibility type. Are SFA still required to process free and reduced lunch applications submitted if operating seamless summer option? This is unknown, although we anticipate that you would see a drop in free and reduced lunch applications being submitted because all children are being served for free. Um, and NDA is waiting on further guidance from USDA that in the situation that you receive an application, do you still have to process it? Um, and issue the family a determination and as soon as we know this answer we will forward it on to you all are you still required to directly certify students yes sfas should maintain their normal direct certification efforts so uploading those files um, issued from nde twice a month Are you still required to conduct verification? Again, this is unknown and we are waiting for further guidance from USDA. And also, what will you submit for your October free and reduced lunch data? So that nutrition report we ask every year. Again, this is unknown and we are waiting for further guidance from USDA. And are CEP or Provision 2 schools required to use their claiming percentages under seamless summer option? No, all meals, again, are served and claimed at the free rate. If or when we return to the National School Lunch Program starting January 1st, when these waivers do expire, then you would start utilizing any CEP or Provision 2 claiming percentages. Um, but while you are operating seamless summer, you would be claiming and serving all meals for free. Now I wanted to open it up to any questions that you all had. Elizabeth, do you have a question? Hi guys. Hi guys. Yeah. Um, oh, why is it? Doing that? Sorry, it's Sorry, echoing it's really, really bad. bad. Um, um, so the 30 day grace period uh, with, for applications, would that start on January 1st? Um, that is a good question and we do not know the answer to this at that time at this time. Okay. But we will forward that on until our next USDA call. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Bobby, this is Mike over at Washoe. Um, so like we did in the spring where schools that were under 50 percent free and reduced um, will be running. If you if we choose to do SSO, it'll be either an open or a closed site, correct? Yes. So the area eligibility was waived. It was included in those eight waivers. So you are able to offer seamless summer at any of your program sites, regardless of their eligibility. If you are open or planning on doing an open site, we would want to see some kind of justification if it's under that 50% to make sure that we're not, um, any open sites are not in close proximity of one another and that you're still maintaining that program equity or integrity. Okay. Can we run our 50% over under SSO and the rest of the schools under NSLP? That is an option. You could do that. Um, you still can run Seamless Summer in your school sites that are under 50% as a closed enrolled site. 
And this okay. would allow you to serve all meals for free to any students that are on campus and enroll. Okay, but if we choose to do one of the two summer feedings, we only get two meals credit. We can't do breakfast, lunch, and snack, correct? That is correct. You could only claim two meals. You could claim snack and supper under a different program if you were operating, say, CACFP snack or supper. Okay. <laughs> Bobby, if, if we were running the um, SSO option during COVID and summertime, would we need to fill out a new application to continue running that at our sites? Yes, this is considered an extension into the fall um, period once your schools um, go back in session. So we would be looking at another opt-in form to be submitted. Thank you. And Bobby, can we have, like here in Washoe, the food bank runs SFSP. Mm -hmm. Can they do theirs and we do it SFSP under us? Like if we did breakfast, lunch, and they did snack, supper, can we run those at the same time under SFSP? That is a good question, and we can consult our community nutrition team just to make sure that is allowable, um, but we could definitely bring it back to them and give you an answer today. Okay. Bobby, it's David with in Las Vegas. I know you're doing the SSO. So as far as uh, approval on SFSP, we're adding additional sites. Is that still a one to two day turnaround uh, from that standpoint once we get everything entered into CMP? I don't know if Lindsay's on the call or not. Um, I'm not sure if Lindsay is on the call, um, but for under summer food service program, it is a different application. And so their processing time could be different and longer. Um, we were told that any new SFAs could take up to a week to process. So I'm not sure how long it would take to do additional sites. However, we were informed that you can't, you cannot backdate this application. So you could not claim any meals served prior to your approval date as free under the summer food service program until you receive that approval right but we're i mean we operated sfsp over the summer so we're not a new site so we're just adding additional locations yes so. you would want to consult with lindsay to see how long it would take to process those additional um, adding those additional sites to your application we've been in contact bobby this is mike again sorry i'm taking up all the time um if we decide to go SSO, can we provide meals for Saturday and Sunday as well, or is it strictly school days only? That is a good question. We have brought this up to our Western Region office, and it is unknown at this time. Although some or weekend meals were allowed back in the springtime in March and April and through the summer, they have not said if it's allowable to do it now in the fall operation. So that's something that we have followed up with them about, and we are waiting an answer. Thank you. Mike, this is Joe. What is allowable, though, under these programs, which I did want to clarify, is that they can be served every weekday. So you can serve them Monday through Friday. So any districts or charters that are on that are only operating a four day school day, a school week, they can serve, they can still serve Monday through Friday, even if their school's not technically in session, either in person or or distance learning on Fridays. Okay. Well, I'm going to push the limit now. Can we serve them on Labor Day? If we're doing a bulk pack? The answer to that question, if you're serving SEMA summer option or summer food service program is yes. Oh, even if holidays can be included. As far as we know. Okay. I don't have an exclusion on that. We'll let you know if there is an exclusion. But under NSLP or or a summer school breakfast program, only school days can be included. So if you continue on with the national school lunch program or the school breakfast program, you can only count meals on school days. Under these other programs, they could be um, on weekdays. And as far as I know, there's no holiday exclusion. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Cindy. Uh, so seamless summer option, you're saying, yes, we can serve food during holidays. 
And the other option is we can either have a closed uh, program, only enrolled students, or we can have an open program where we can invite the community, uh, any child under 18. Yes. And in the opt-in form, um, you can designate whether you want your site as an open or a closed site. Excellent. Thank you. And running SSO, that doesn't affect uh, the fresh fruit and vegetable program at all, does it? Because it's an extension of NSLP? It is, and the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program is considered its own separate grant. Um, so you would administer that typically um, how you do fresh fruit and vegetable in a distance manner. Um, and it would not affect if you are doing seamless summer, you'd still be eligible to operate fresh fruit and vegetable. This is Cindy again. So if we do an open uh, for SSO and we do it open, uh, is there a restriction with regards to the next available uh, distribution center up near us? Is there a mileage restriction or would I have to research who's doing it around my area as well? So we would be looking for proximity. So in your Clark County with all the charters and Clark County operating their open sites, we would want to see that, you know, you're not right next to each other serving open sites. We want to see that there is some distance. So it is on a case by case basis. We don't have a specific mileage, but even if you're close and you provided justifications, maybe there's a major roadway that your students can't cross or you're serving a different subset of students. We're just looking for that additional clarification. So we all do our due diligence to make sure we're uh, maintaining that program integrity. Um, for the seamless summer and the national school lunch program okay great thank you yeah um yeah i'm just thinking about you know the population we serve and it you know we are a cp school we're at above 80 percent uh free and reduced lunch for just our students so i'm imagining we'll have a, an influx there but thank you and this is joe you know this if i could just speak th this is unprecedented in child nutrition programs that we you know that we can serve every child for free um, during the school year like this we've never I've, i'm not aware of a circumstance like this but each each uh each sfa will be required when as they opt in for these program to submit their program integrity specifics to maintain that programming integrity whether it's controls with time or controls with distance or both so that there are not sites that are open so close so that you know households are not receiving duplicate and triplicate meals um, as best as possible. And Lauren, it looks like you rose your hand. Did you have a question? I do, Bobby. Thanks. Um, this is this is somewhat just a little bit confusing mm -hmm. because in the charter world, of course, families come from all over. The valley there's not an attendance zone so it's very difficult to say that a particular school you know located in you know spot a you know might be in close proximity to another school maybe in clark county because our families quite honestly are everywhere mm -hmm. and it gets what joe just talked about because i don't anticipate somerset going to an SSO at all, possibly, but if we did, I think we would stay with it being enrolled because we're doing the pre-ordering of meals and we're doing multiple meals on it on one day a week. But having said that, we can do that. And even if we operate just even under the National School Lunch Program, really a family could leave us, you know, our one day a week, they pick up meals. And then on other days, they could be picking up additional meals from another school in another system. Is that accurate? It is accurate. Unfortunately, we can't plan for every single um, scenario out there. Um, if families are determined, it is possible that they could get multiple or triple meals. We're just trying to plan accordingly to try and prevent that as much as possible. It is only intended that the families receive only two meals per meal service day but again there's going to be scenarios outside of your control um, that families do have that opportunity to receive double or triple meals so this might be a question that i i just discussed maybe with you and maybe not in this forum but you know is is the seamless summer option i would almost lean towards a closed 
you know, mm-hmm. for old students because of just what we're how we're operating right now. But is it should we continue as is or should we move to an SSO closed model? I, you know, I, I think I need some further information. And maybe again, that's a conversation to have directly with not forum. I, I would recommend that you transition to seamless summer under your operations. Now you're serving the one time a week, all your enrolled students or whoever is ordering the under seamless summer. This would just allow you to claim them for free and serve them all for free. So you wouldn't have to deal with any situation where you have paid students that are requesting meals. Um, you could serve them all at that free rate and claim them at the free rate. So it's just intended to ease your meal service operations. So if we, if, Thank you for that. Um, so if we move to the seamless summer option, do we, and we say closed, it's only for our enrolled families, we then still could be um, serving meals to younger children or older children is what I'm hearing. Is that accurate? No, under a closed site, again, you could only serve those oh. enrolled students. So if you did decide to do an open site, you could feed those siblings that aren't enrolled in your district or in your charter school. So when you say moving to a seamless summer, would you recommend the open or the closed? That's a a great question. And we would have to see kind of weighs the pros and cons um, for your individual SFA and see what other options are available. Um, But you absolutely, um, I recommend going to a seamless summer and we can have a conversation later to kind of determine what's the best type of seamless summer option to operate. I'll, I'll, I'll chat with you. Thank you so very much. Appreciate it. This, this is Cindy. Um, so, uh, you know, we are a CP school. I think I mentioned that earlier. And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the advantages of that SSO for us uh, because we are already, you know, receiving that free reimbursement. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at it for us as in I can serve meals during the holidays, during the bring, mm-hmm. winter breaks, right, um, all the way up to December 31st, 2020 as of now. Yes. Yes. Okay. So even if I had a closed one and just serving my students, I could still do that for them. Yes. And if I had it, and then if I had an open site, then I can still do that for anyone that has children under the age of eighteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, There's a few questions in the chat. Um, We are going to forward the presentation as well as the opt-in form and the site review form under Seamless Summer. And you'll see in the meeting chat, we've attached the Summer Food Service Program application materials just so you can weigh um, the pros and cons if you wanted to go to that program. This is what you would have to fill out to apply. So we would send that all after the meeting and also a recording of this meeting invitation as well. Bobby, one other question. This is Lauren again. Mm -hmm. So if the seamless summer option, you're still allowed with the other waivers to do multiple meals on one day, continuing that kind of a distribution model. Is that correct? Yes, you're still allowed to do the multiple meals. You can allow parents to pick up and that non-congregate. So all those similar waivers that you already opted in into those fall national school lunch program waivers are still applicable under seamless summer. And then the five days, Joe really pretty much covered this, but the five days a week. So professional development days, parent conference days, we can we can serve on all of those days as opposed to right now we were not allowed to. Yes. Hi, Bobby. I may have missed this, but I know right now that one of my sites is located near a CCSD school. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe it is the major street as well as a busy street separating us. And I don't think it's like corner to corner. It's a little bit down in. Are we still able to operate that as a site, my site? You are. So it's depending on if you want to do a closed or an open site, but you could always submit that information and we'll approve on a case by case basis. Um, at minimum, we would approve you as a closed site use so you could still serve all your enrolled children. Um, but that's an option. If you're looking to serve for the community, you could always submit that information to us and we can give you a decision whether it would be approved to operate as an open site. 
So when you say submit that information, you want the location of the other site, the CCSD site that's near me? No, you would just put the address of your school site um, itself, and then we would do that on the back end. So we would compare to what other open sites are operating in the area and give you a decision whether you could operate as a closed or an open site. Okay, thank you so much, Bobby. And Bobby, I know under SFSP you can only do two meal cl two claims of meals like breakfast, lunch. Under SSO, can we do breakfast, lunch, snack? So under SSO, it's still um, limited to the two meals under Seamless okay. Summer. So they're similar in that regard. Okay. Bobby, this is Lauren again from Somerset. For the opt-in, is that going to be another? Are you going to add that into the, you know, where how we went in before to submit for the opt-in, the opting in to the other waivers? Or is there going to be a new process, you know, for that, for this, for the Seamless Summer option? So it is a new process. It will be a fillable PDF that we will issue to all of you. Um, it'll be much simpler than the form that you filled out under the National School Lunch Program. And it's basically just identifying which waivers that you would like to um, opt into and then listing your sites um, that you want to include under Seamless Summer and then whether you would want them open or closed. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, it looks like they've slowed down in the chat as well. And we'll go through if there are any questions that were unanswered and send the question or the answers to all of you so that you can find out these um, the answers so you can make the best decision. And again, we will be sending out the meeting recording, the PowerPoint slides, um, the summer food service application documents, and then that opt-in form for SSO. Bobby, this is Lauren. One other thing, and this is really not related to the, the, con the topic today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we're sensing as we're really looking at all of our, our numbers right now with children, enrolled children, that when we get to the day where we have to you know, certify the number of free, reduced, paid students, because we are operating on a total 100% virtual model opening up, I think for some parents, um, there's not this sense of urgency to complete an application, if you will, because mm -hmm. their children are not coming in. And I do know, I hope that we're all aware that this is going to be, our numbers may be lower this year um, than what they typically would have been or should be, because until we get back into daily where parents then are starting to rely on that day-to-day -day meal service for their children and they can't pick up meals or whatever, numbers are going to go back up. So I'm just hoping that there's maybe pushing back some, you know, or doing a second day, you know, uh, in terms of certifying results. I just think numbers are going to be a little bit off for us anyway. Maybe I'm wrong. We completely agree. And we have brought this up to Western region. We understand that your free and reduced percentages determine a lot for your districts. Um, so if you're not receiving those applications, what does that mean for you? Or what are you reporting for that October data? Um, we know that the October data that you submit, we use it for a lot of our determinations, whether it be for eligibility for the fresh fruit and vegetable program, the um, breakfast after the bell program. So we have brought this concern up to USDA and we are waiting on further guidance of what they expect you all to do if you are stopping collecting those applications and serving all those students for free. This is Cindy. Is that also um, in relation to CEP and the percentage that uh, we might be serving and our eligibility for that uh, in, the, in the next year? So CEP is based on your direct certification rates. So we are we were given guidance that you are to continue to um, directly certify students. So you're going to continue to upload that NDE file twice a month. And your claiming percentages under CEP will be based on your direct certification percentages. And under CEP, if you elected this year as a new base year, you do have four years to operate. So you're locking those percentages. So if for some reason, your direct certification dropped to where you're not eligible or you didn't receive that eligibility letter this year, you have already locked in those rates for four years. So you can continue operating until you're um, your those direct certification rates return to normal maybe in the next year. Excellent. Thank you. 
sorry, Bobby, then another question just popped into my mind. This is Lauren again. Um, if we opt into the SSO, are we, we are permitted though, if applications continue to come in, because since the, these are slated to expire at the end of December and, you know, maybe we're back in school by then or some sort of a hybrid uh, model, can we be, can, can we elect to continue to process applications during this time if we opt in and we're approved for SSO? Are we allowed to do that? So we brought this up and we weren't, we didn't receive a no. So there's no um, issue from USDA saying to stop processing applications, um, but we're unsure if you continue to receive them, should you process them? I always recommend yes, because you want to make sure that you're completing them in that 10 day time frame. but we haven't heard anything else from USDA if you're still required to process or seek that, you know, families apply for the National School Lunch Program. I would just like to have the eligibility status in the system. Mm -hmm. So if we revert back to NSLP at the end of December, we're not scrambling at that time trying to make that happen. Absolutely. And I feel like that's why um, it is still um, required for you to do direct certification also, um, because again, these waivers are only valid until December 31st. Um, we're unsure if they will be extended or if they would be extended. It's a possibility that you all may ask to be um, to transition back to NSLP. There's still a lot of unknowns at this time. Hey, Bobby, this is Brittany at Legacy. Um, so an open site, it's just recommended that it's 50 percent if we're only in the 40s are we still able to be an open site you are still able to be an open site and again we're just going to approve these on a case-by-case -case basis so we don't want to see a high density of open sites all in one area where families could hit every single open site um, and receive meals and again there are some scenarios that are out of our control um, but you could always submit this information to us and then we would give you an approval whether you can operate as an open or closed Okay, that's helpful. Um, and if we are new, we've never oper operated summer feeding. So what would you anticipate the timeline for applying for that would be? So for, are you talking about the summer food service program or seamless summer? Seamless summer. So seamless summer is an extension of the national school lunch program. So you already have done that heavy lift of applying for the program. So you would just have to opt in to doing seamless summer. And again, it's a two page form. It's much simpler than the opt in form that we sent for the national school lunch program waivers. And we ask a couple clarifying questions and which waivers you would like to opt into. And then ultimately it's just the number of sites and the location where you want to operate seamless summer. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, Bobby, this is Lauren again. You just said something there. We've never operated SSO. So is that another process advance of opting in that we have to do at this time? No, it would just be the opt-in form. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. And this is Joe. I want to clarify, you know, especially for new sponsors, um, you know, that if you're operating a closed site, so you have one or two charge schools, for example, you can serve the children on the campus and you can still have non-congregate grab and go for the enrolled students. For example, those receiving distance learning simultaneously. So you can still serve the children on or your students on campus that are enrolled and the students that are off campus, you know, in hybrid model or full distance learning model can still come and uh, receive the meals. Also, if you're um, un unfamiliar with SEMA summer option and you choose an open site, uh, keep in mind that your meal counts could go significantly higher. Um, we've had, uh, for example, one chart of this last uh, spring who operated the SEMA summer option open site had almost three times the amount of meals served because they're serving the community, sh all children in the community that show up to the open site. Something to keep in mind. And this is Cindy. When you say all children that show up, does that mean the child must be with the adult in order for us to serve them the amount of meals that they request? 
No, there okay. is a waiver um, for parent pickup. So Great. the parents okay. coming through the line, you would just have to have some kind of plan in place. Like, how are you going to verify they have sure. children? So either they're providing names, maybe they show you their ID, or, you know, you know the families in your programs pretty well and how many um, students that they have. So we're just looking to see what you would put in place to make sure that those parents or the adults coming through actually do have children at home that they're um, giving these meals to. Oh wait, rewind. I'm sorry. Uh, you're saying that so there we do need to have some sort of method. So a, a family, like a, a parent, can't just drive up and say, "Oh, I, I have two kids, and so then now I'm giving them, you know, four meals, two for the day, or what have you, or the ten for the week." I actually have to say, I have to have a plan in place to say, "How do I verify this with you?" So you can, it is an option that the parents can come through and maybe they give you the names of the students who are just looking, or the children, um, looking for some kind of plan that you're verifying, not that, you know, adults coming in, I want five meals kind of thing. Sure. Even though it's similar, um, it could be names of the students, you could be your IDs. Again, maybe it's a, an adult that's coming through every single day. Right. You're, you know the family because they've been attending your school. Um, so there's just different, um, plans that you could put in place, but we're just looking that you're trying to ask to okay. see if they have, it's not just a free for all that every adult comes through gets, gets sure. 10 meals or, yeah. Sure. And if I'm taking, and, it, and when you say it, I'm asking for names, let's say, am I writing all these names down or am I just saying, oh, okay, you told me. Mm -hmm. not you're not kids. required to write any names down. Um, okay. This would just be your kind of check, like, okay, okay, they have three, they provided three student names, I'm gonna provide them. Um, six meals right. for this lunch. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. So if we do SSO open sites, we've got to let our principals and administrators know since we're feeding the community, there may be more traffic during the day if that's when meal distribution is happening and <clears throat> have them allow it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a big consideration, Mike, um, yeah. you know, as in the safety of that, the, you know, the manageability of that, um, as far as plan, maintaining the social distancing for those pickups, you know, the sites, if they have the capacity to serve in that manner and serve the, you know, serve the community in that manner. Um, those are all factors in choosing those open sites. Well, we could do it like if it's running during the school day, we can be doing, you know, lunch for the students there and then maybe out in the parking lot it's a drive through for the ones that aren't attending school there and you can do that still in a closed site if it's just for the enrolled kids and you're right right um just serving the enrolled kids you yeah. know see a form of a roster um, <laughs> trying to think know. through all the logistics on this stuff mm -hmm. so you do not have to feed the whole community at that at all these schools you can serve right. those schools as, as closed sites Okay. So Joe and Bobby, this is Lauren again. Um, and thanks for taking all the questions. It may seem foolish to you, but for those of us who've not grown up in the nutrition world, make sure we're doing this well and doing it weekly. And we will continue. We have parents pre-order their meals because we are purchasing them from a vendor. So we, we need to have an, a, you know, a number. Um, now though, and we've always communicated to our families who are paid that they need to make sure that appropriate um, monies were in their children's lunch accounts before they pre-ordered their meals. We would simply say, no one is paying for me. I mean, we'll, I'll do this more diplomatically if you will, um, but no one will be paying for meals at all if we're approved to do SSO. And I, I'm assuming, I think we're kind of, kind of leaning towards closed. I don't know if I, I think CCSD will have the open and the SF, SFSP covered. Um, and they're everywhere close to us. So did it make sense what I just asked there? No, nobody will be paying for a meal then if we are approved to do SO. Yes, so no one would be paying. And again, we can backdate this application. So if you, um, we can backdate it to 9-1. So if any meals were already served and you collected that paid fee, you could, um, you do have the option if you wanted to start on 9-1 to claim all those meals for free, you could then reimburse any paid amount that you previously collected, 9-1 going forward. 
Hey, Bobby, one more question. This is Brittany at Legacy. Um, for the open site, are we just using a tally sheet to collect the number of meals that we're serving? Yes, you would just be using a tally sheet. Okay, thank you. And you need to maintain those records, you know, um, for future like, you know, audit trail. Okay, awesome. This is Jessica in Clark County. I have a question. If one of our sites is not approved as an open site because a nearby charter has already been approved as open, so we only get approved as a closed site, can we still serve any CCSD student out of that site, or does it have to be only CCSD students that are enrolled in that particular school? That is a great question. We haven't run into that situation before. Um, but we could definitely check into that for you and let you know. OK, thank you. Any other questions? All right, hearing a pause, we're going to um, close this meeting and again we will send you all the resources you mentioned throughout and we're always available for questions if you need help deciding um, and what are the requirements are or any scenario questions great thank you hey, thank